Did you know, Carl, that cataract operations on the eye were performed in India as early as 1000 BC? And uh, in Babylonia, in the same time, the fees of eye surgeons were rigidly fixed by law and were quite generous. So, for instance, uh, if you're a very rich person, it cost you about 10 shekels. If you're a slave, only two shekels. But if the rich person lost the sight of their eye after the surgeon had operated, they would uh, cut off the hand of the of the doctor. What, so he gets, he gets one chance at it? Well, he doesn't want to screw up. Yeah, I know, but everyone's ad allowed what a couple of errors. That's how you learn, isn't it? That's, that's a, stu a stupid rule. But then again, I don't know why they'd be so worried about their eyes back then. What do you mean? Well, there was less to look at back then. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Well, <laughs> like that, I saw a fellow on the tube on the way here today who was blind. Proper, fully on, fully on blind. Blind? Um, now, for him, I just was like, oh, that's so depressing. Right. So much to see in the world now. Loads right. of stuff. Right. Art, buildings, and all that. Now, back then, if these people did have sight once, the pyramids, you, you remember it in your head, and that's that's enough. There wasn't loads of clutter anyway. It was all sand. So even if you fell over because you're blind, you, at least you landed on something soft. Whereas now, <laughs> it's rubbish being blind. Stairs, loads and loads of people, loads of curbs and things. It's not a good time to be blind. So I'd prefer, if it's going to be blind, that's be blind brilliant. back when Tutankhamun was not about. Do you think that's about. a choice that people have that are, that are blind now? No. If you're going to be blind, be blind back when Tutankhamun was knocking about. But all I'm saying Sorry, is- Sorry, Doctor, I seems, didn't realise there was a choice. Seems, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If, you, if you'd have only told me you were going blind, I'd have said, well, let's get you back 3,000 years. <laughs> it just seems a bit harsh, that's all. When someone's trying to help you and operate on your eyes, and, and they have a little bit of a slip up like we all do in, in jobs. Mm. You have a bad day, mm. and it's, he, he has to have his hands cut off. Then who's helping him? Who puts the hand back on him? And if they don't put the hand back on him right, do they have something done to them? They're blinded. Well, it just, <laughs> it just seems like yeah. a no-win situation. I wouldn't be a doctor. And maybe that's why there aren't enough doctors about now, because of things like that that put people off. I don't think so. Well, I wouldn't be a doctor now. Why? Look at the hassle that happens now. Everything's, you're being watched all the time. You're not allowed to slip up. Right. Well, that's generally quite a good rule, isn't it, that doctors don't make well, mistakes? No, but you've got to, I, I'd say at the end of the day, it's a complicated job. I'd get more annoyed when, you know, say like the fellow I've got around coming to fix my boiler. Mm. The fact he keeps having a go, he keeps charging me 80 quid, he don't really fix Is it. Is it still, keeps, still not working? Back. I haven't cut his hands off. No. He keeps coming back. Oh, I'm a bit short on money, let's go around to the Pilkington now, household. Charge him 80 quid again. <laughs> oh, it's Christmas, let's pop round twice. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Whereas a doctor who's trying to help people, it's a yeah. difficult job. Yeah. If he makes a mistake now and again, mm. I think, well, it's bound to happen. It's, it's complicated. The, 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 can't you see where um, I, 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 I agree with you that people make mistakes, and uh, and I imagine there are good and bad doctors. They try and even that out by um, it being a very, very obviously uh, stringent exam, and and uh, you know. It's eleven years they've got to do. I read up on it. Eleven mm. years it takes to be a doctor. No, it doesn't. It does. It takes seven. No, but then they've got to be in a hospital or something for four years before they get to play with someone. Right, okay, yeah. So okay. that's ages. Eh? You're gonna get bored. You're gonna get bored. Well, and they, then when but no, but that's it. They, they, you know, they, they really do try and, uh, rule out. And there's still, there's still chance and mistake and, and don't forget, you know, t you're given, um, nearly impossible tasks still in medicine. Just, just think of the, think of the risk with, um, you know, transplants alone, you know, and they're getting better and better at those yeah. and they're lasting longer. But, but the fact of the matter is, it's better to have a go, in it, than not have one. If someone well, said to me, right, depends. you need a new heart, yeah. we're gonna do it. Well, if they say you're gonna die anyway, let's yeah. try this new thing, you might as well. Have a but word. then there are some things that there is not worth the risk. When someone, uh, it goes wrong, someone's facial surgery goes wrong because they wanted plumper lips or a little yeah, well, nose, I'll go, you're a sympathy. fucking idiot. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. You yeah, shouldn't even be doing that. Doctors shouldn't even be allowed to do that. I, I don't, don't know think. why. I really don't know why um, a doctor uh, under a Hippocratic oath takes the risk of something going badly wrong. Sometimes general anaesthetic because they want to because they can't be bothered to fucking go for a run, mm. right? So they have fucking bits sliced off and tied up and sucked out. I want to go. You lazy fucking fat pig. Mm. Just go for a run and stop eating burgers, right? Mm. You might fucking die. Well, well. 
can I just stop you there, Rick? Because actually, if it weren't for uh, a plump patient, mm. the stethoscope would never have been invented. What, because you couldn't hear Yeah, the, the, person, the person who uh, invented the steth stethoscope, uh, Dr. René Lenec, uh, couldn't have a very fat patient come in and couldn't hear her heart through the blubber. But then that's, that's the sign <laughs> of the problem. I mean, that's the sign of the problem, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, rather than saying, hang on, let's, let's get a bigger chair in for her because she's got a fat ass. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, well, you're not welcome here. If you can't get through the door, I'm not seeing you. I mean, if you've got a doctor who's having his hands cut off because he messed up an operation, yet fatty's coming in <laughs> and getting special treatment, <laughs> I, d I wouldn't give him time of day. You see, this, this is what I'm saying, right? This is going right back to what I was saying at the beginning. The problem is, we've got pills for everything, and all this is doing is making people treat the body badly. Because yeah. you're going, be all right, there'll be something. It's there'll funny, something. isn't it, that like these tests, they go, well, let's have a look. It's what we were talking before about um, uh, weighing kids. If they can't get through the door to get to school, it's too, you don't you know. If they go, oh, I'm just going to take a sample of your stool. Actually, I don't, uh, you're too fat. Your shit's come out like Tagliatelle. Your ass is too fucking fat. Stop eating your gut. I'm going to take a sample of your stool. What, the one you fucking broke when you sat down? <laughs> <laughs> I just think this is the problem. You know, we can do too much, and because of this, people are going, I don't care about my body. Mm. They worry more about the, the plasma telly getting a scratch on it than they do about their own body. Exactly. And if we if we stopped giving them tablets willy-nilly, they'd have to look after the body more. Willy-nilly is one of the worst diseases in the Western <laughs> world, of course. <laughs> now, medicine is the art or science of healing, and that doesn't always have to be um, a, a drug or a surgery. I mean, bedside manner has a lot to do with things, and uh, also it's all about care as well. Uh, we mustn't just forget that um, some people don't need medicine, they just need help. Um, for example, uh, there are people that help disabled people um, have intercourse, where they can't, you know, maybe get on to the, to the, the, the woman herself, and uh, there's someone that actually helps the man put in his penis um, to the, uh, the woman's um, vagina, and okay, they leave the room. Yeah. What? I've never seen, I've never even heard of this. <laughs> it's true. Absolutely true. They're Steve? helpers. Yeah, no, I believe that is the case. Yeah. And that's just, no, that's just as needed as anything that, that, that might cure well, it's them. Not, it's not, that's pleasure. Yeah. So what are you saying, because you can't walk or, or, or move, that you can't love someone and want to, to, to share that love? I'm just saying it's not a priority. Well, no, but they, 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 they're, they're going to live, they're, they're, they're healthy ap apart from their, their disability. I've met someone, they want to, you know, consummate this, this love, and someone is, um, helps them out and goes, well, I, you know, that's, that's part of my job. No, it's not part of the job. <laughs> well, it, it, well, no it is part of this job, because that's their job. I have never heard anyone say, oh, I've had a right day today. Why? I've been playing with Arthur's, uh, tackle all day. They don't I, play never... with Arthur's tackle, they pop Arthur's tackle in Hilda's vagina. I don't think they do. They do! How can they enjoy that? I mean, maybe once, maybe it. once, and they'd go, that didn't work, did it? I didn't enjoy that, Hilda. No. How can they enjoy it with a nurse stood there? They don't, do she, no, they help her in, she helps it, Arthur in, or he, might be a male nurse, pops Arthur in, goes, okay, Arthur, um, I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes, right, goes outside. But what's the point, though, in that? Why? Because it's all about the mood and everything. He's just stuck onto a, like, like a stag beetle clinging <laughs> onto a leaf. There's no enjoyment in that. Oh, the well-known uh, stag beetle copulating with a leaf syndrome. No, but I'm no, not that's saying... That's the position in the Garbage Sutra. I'm no, just he saying... No, he knows that, you know, he's, he's, uh, it's, a, it's a, I think it's a lovely act and someone's willing to... Wouldn't you help someone Definitely in Definitely not. No, but well, so... Not. No, look, so the guy goes, um, uh, uh, oh, this is my wife, um, we're both say, well, I can't, I can't, you know, can you just pop me in, Carl? Um, you're the only, you know, uh, uh, you're the only person around. No, um, I don't think it's important enough. But there enough. are people- What do you mean you don't think it's important enough? I'd be happy to go round, put the washing on for them, make the bed. Do you want a cup of tea? Yeah, I'd love one. There you go. Oh, just before you go, forget it. <laughs> if they asked me to do that, I would- I'd, I'd quit. And I think it, I don't think it happens, because people it wouldn't take happen. that on for a job. You it never does. hear about it. On Comic Relief, when they're raising money, they don't go, thanks to Midland Bank for this hundred grand, that's gonna go towards Arthur getting his end away. That's no. ridiculous. So you- you would- you would rather them not have the pleasure of each other than just help them in. No, because they'd, they'd work out some way that they could do something for each other. I, I want to play the guitar, my fingers aren't long enough. I knocked it on the head. It's the same thing. If you can't do it, don't do it. So are you telling me, right, okay, um, if the, suppose there's a, li a little fellow, he's got no arms, no legs, right? Right. L little Bob, okay, there he is. All right, Carl, right? Um, he's got a friend, another little fella, 
with no arms and no legs. All right, Carl. Right? They love each other. Two little, two little fellas. Little, two little dwarves with no arms and no legs. Okay? Lovely little fellas. They get married. Okay? Look, Carl. You can't, you can't put my, uh, my penis up my, um, my boyfriend's bottom, can you? No, you I can't. No. Why, why not? Why no, not? Do you need can't... anything else doing? Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, no, it's all... weird how you can manage everything else. Well, no. I'm no. here to help you. Everything else seems to be sorted. Well, I'm just in the chair. Why do you need help in this department? Well, because he's over there and I'm here. And I just, if you just pop me in and just leave No, I'm not there. doing that. It's not good for you. You've lost your arms and legs. You'll be losing that soon if you carry on sticking it up there. <laughs> Well, after the medical advancements of the Greeks and the Romans, of course, uh, through the Middle Ages, particularly in Europe, we ended up going backwards, um, and it became, uh, you know, people sort of returned to superstition, started relying on that, you know, sanitation was poor, a lot of the amazing sanitation the Romans had built was left to ruin, and uh, we went backwards, and really it wasn't until the Renaissance that people like Leonardo da Vinci started to, you know, draw pictures of the anatomy and so on. Well, putting scientific um, evidence and experimentation behind the theories as opposed to someone with a big cauldron saying, if you bury your toad, your warts go away. Exactly. He looked into this and, uh, and then thought, well, maybe they don't. Maybe it's a coincidence, you know. So uh, that's where our experimentation comes. Empirical evidence, not just hope. Of course, you still couldn't uh, experiment or dissect humans because that was frowned upon. Uh, so often they would actually, they, the only people they were allowed to dissect and operate on were criminals. And at times, criminals would actually be uh, dissected or cut open whilst they were still alive as part of their punishment. Is that ever justifiable, do you think, uh, Carl, that people sacrifice for medical advancements? They do it now, don't they? You hear about these people having, uh, you know test done on them you get paid 20 quid and they say let's let's rub this cream on your head yeah and you get your 20 quid and if if your head goes funny they say well you took the 20 quid it's your own fault wasn't that a student that took like, yeah, a few grand head, he what became happened? the living elephant man didn't he oh yeah it was quite horrific his head was in all kinds of weird yeah shapes. i mean that's unfortunate for 20 quid but yeah. i'd say do it on the ill people because they've got nothing to lose just test it it's you know all this testing on animals and that well, don't test it on animals. If you've got an itch, the doctor can say, I've got this cream here, we haven't tested it, it might work, it might make it worse, give it a go. Right. Yeah, but the whole point is that if you do that, someone's head might blow up to the side yeah, of the Yeah, it might elephant. outweigh well, the ailment. That's, that's you... happened already. A fellow who had nothing wrong with him has now got a head of the elephant man for yeah. 20 quid. Yes, I know. Well, but... That isn't fair. No, I know. But you're saying, um, you're going for athlete's foot, rub this on your feet, Oh, your bollocks fell off. Never mind, it was a chance we had to take. I mean, that's a particularly sloppy bit of medical research, that one. <laughs> no, yeah. No, but say, like, my auntie Nora, right? She's had everything wrong with her, right? She's had tablets that, that haven't been tested on anyone else. They test them on Nora. She's And she's up for it. She's like, oh, I haven't had that. That's our little <laughs> tester. Yeah. She loves it. But she's she's she she knows that that's the case, and she's happier to give something a go than not a go. I mean, it's ridiculous, the amount of stuff. She rattles, she carries that many pills. <laughs> like a maraca. You can hear her coming. But that's that's the way her life is now. She's just used to the fact that if it weren't for all these tablets, she'd be dead. Yeah, but, the, well, not necessarily, but the, but, but the pills, she doesn't take pills that have been untested. She's not taking experimental pills, I think pills, she's, Carl. she's, honestly, she's got so much. Uh, well, so again, you just, you just <clears throat> made that up then. You just assumed that, that they haven't been tested on someone. Where'd they get them? Where'd they get these pills from that haven't been tested? Well, it's it, it's all very new. She's she's on a lot of new medication. That can go either way. Could this be one of the reasons why she farted for 24 hours? It, it could have been one of the side effects. Five minutes. Oh, five minutes, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's what the, that's, you know, that's what my mum said. It's all the medication. Because your body's in shock, isn't it? It's been, you know, given all these drugs that it's not used to. Luckily, some of the pills weren't suppositories, because she'd have lost them. <laughs> in, in the in the in the great fart of 1989, <laughs> I've lost all my suppositories. <laughs> but you know that's what you do, isn't it? If you're in pain, and uh, I mean, like I don't know if I told you when I had kidney stones. I think you mentioned it. I was in agony. Yeah. And they said in the I was in A and E mm. lying on my back, mm. and the woman at the A and E counter said to Suzanne, "Who's that over there?" And she said, "Always oh, with me. He's in agony." So they said, "What's up with him?" So they, oh, it's his kidney stones again. Because this is when I went back at the night. Mm. I, I was like, I couldn't care that people were staring at me. I, I was rolling about on the floor, like a, a dying fly, on my back. 
I just didn't care about what was going on around me. But I was told that because it's busy, that they might have to send someone out to shove like something up my arse that would get to the pain quicker. Well, what do you mean send them out? Well, they send what? No, while no, you're no, lying no, on the no, floor no. in A&E, they're going to send somebody out. What do you mean? Oh, you mean a, oh, you mean a, uh, uh, a pill? I thought you meant to get to your kidney quicker than up your nose. No, 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 a pill. They put it up there and, yeah. and apparently it'll kick in quicker. Yeah, yeah. The tablet works quicker. Yeah. Up your arse and it does down your throat. Yeah, because it's you a mucous membrane and it's... Uh, yeah. Well, I, I was up for it. I just was like, whatever it takes. Now, saying uh, that to me now... But now, hold on though, what if the doctor said, okay, um, I could give you this morphine, take it, it will take a few minutes to kick in, or I could rub some on my, um, uh, penis. Uh, I pop an orange on the end of my penis, I rub that in morphine, and I pop that out of your, uh, your, your, your rectum, Mr. Pilkington. Are you in agony or not? Are you in agony? Okay, look, I'm just smearing... I'd, I'd, I'd say I'll get uh, a second opinion. Well, no, you haven't, you haven't got time. There it is. Do you want this up, do you want this up your ass? It's covered in morphine. He's, um, uh, in his private life, he's a, he's a, he's a promiscuous gay man, but in his, in his professional life, he is a doctor with, um, a morphine smeared penis, and he's ready for action. So, if you're, are, are you, and he's he, willing to do that in the middle of A&E. Yeah. So, he takes no pleasure from that. It's the only way to, so are you in pain? Do you want this done or not? Yes or no? He comes out into any reception, his trousers around his ankles, he has an yeah. erect penis, he says, Carl, do you want me to stick this up your ass? And your answer is? Yes or no? I, 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 You're in terrible agony. He's wearing a condom. He smeared the condom in. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not unprotected, um, uh, uh, uh morphine, uh, uh, penile, um, surgery. Administration. <laughs> Administration. <laughs> and what, in and out, done? Just in and out, yeah, he just administered the, 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 the your, your, your ass takes on the morphine from the doctor penis. And it's the only way, really. In uh, and out. Yeah, in and out, up once, okay, and out. And it'll definitely work. Uh, you, oh. you will, the pain will go away. No side it'll effects. It'll be pleasurable, no side effects. effects. No side effects, no. I'd probably call Auntie Nora and ask if she's had it yet. <laughs> Can I just return us back to where we started from? Because in Ricky's introduction, he said that modern man, in a sense, with all the technology we have, can play God. And this is something which is huge now. A lot of yeah. ethical discussions about things like stem cell research. Should we be interfering nope. in what should be a godly terrain? You say no straight away. Straight away, no. I think uh, it's sort of like messing about now. I think that's the problem. We've got the tools and they like to use them. And that's what happens. I've got a sander. Uh, for Christmas, and I, I, I can't wait to sand stuff. I can't even think of enough things that need sanding, but I want to use it. And Not scruffy sander. And that's the problem, innit? If you've got the tools, you can't have the tools and say, pop them in the shed. Well, no, I don't want to use them. I've got a new tool, eh? Right, well, sand the shed, then. That's the problem, innit? All these, all these, you know, medical people. Mm. Um, that's what happened in the Hulk, innit? Yeah, well, again, that's, I'll just say, that is a work of fiction. The Hulk. Yeah, but with all fiction, comes the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Certainly uh, in science fiction. <laughs> but the problem is, this is what I say is the problem, we can sum it up here if you like. I think Go on. Sums it up. Go on, no, this is a, you, is you, it a quote you, from someone? Well, yeah, yeah it's, 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 it is one for sound bites and um, it, it just no. saves a lot of time, uh, Carl's quote, you don't, you don't have to study the book or anything. Um, so uh, let's let's sum it up there. Let, 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 we're going to end it here, but we're going to end it uh, oh, oh. With, uh, with this quote from Carl Pilkington. Carl, shoot me. <laughs> People are living too long. <laughs> okay, that what, that's your summary of medicine. Well, yeah, it is medicine. because it's kind of now. You see, I agree with medicine to stop pain because it's, it's depressing pain. Mm. Stop the pain. Mm. Um, I'd say, I'd say, as soon as we sorted that out, and we started saying, "Do you want a new face?" That's way over the line. Yeah. No one should be getting a new face unless they're really disfigured. Yeah. But those are the people who are getting new faces. No, they're not. There's people messing about. Yeah, no, it's people... Well, plastic doing, surgery, but that's yeah. people's own choice. They're paying for no, it. it's, it's ridiculous. I know, but it's, not, it's not taking it away from other people, is it? Yeah, it is, because the person who's messing about with someone's face could be doing something no, else. No, because they're plastic surgeons. They're privately employed. Yeah, but they shouldn't be. They what should be sorting about? someone else out who's got a little funny head. They shouldn't be messing about with Pushing someone who's got forward, yeah. <laughs> Trying to get some free treatment. Get some free and treatment it never looks right, anyway. They spend no. all that money. It never fits properly. Yeah, no. but you, you, this, fish, is, this is what annoys me about Fish Carly. lips and, uh, and that, 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 little, that yeah. stupid little skeletal nose. You'd be and better off changing the head, all of it, rather than messing about with the face, because it never fits properly. 
Mm. But you've completely, as a form of summary, you have completely gone off tangent. No, that's not a summary yet. Sum up. Right. I have one right. more go. So, this is this is the real one. Yeah. Okay, Carl. Sum up our global guide to medicine. Go. Uh, today's cure. Mm. Mm. Today's cure. It's something like it's something like that. It'll be something like. Uh, mm. Today's cure is tomorrow's headache. It's all right. That's all right. Because what I'm saying there is, go on. We can come up with with stuff. Mm. We can come up with a tablet to get rid of the headache. Mm. Tomorrow, your headache's gone. Your legs hurting. So today's cure is actually tomorrow's leg ache. So today's cure is tomorrow's leg ache. Yeah, but ages ago go I on. said to you, don't solve problems. Yeah. Because a problem solved is a problem. Caused. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I don't remember that quote. But okay, so so finally, in summation, you were, what you said was so. Uh, okay. At the end so, of the day, we've all got to die of something. Right. Now Albert might come in. I'm a doctor. Right, Albert. How are you today? What's what's wrong with you today, Albert? Uh, oh, I've got an inflammation of the uh. Testicular region. Right. Oh, my scrotal sac is all—it's all stretchy and swollen. It's pustulating, and it's causing the penis to uh, to be all red and inflamed, and and that spread to the anus. Right. <gasps> Take these tablets. Right. Where do I put them? Where do I put them? Just have them with some water after a bath. Okay, I'm not gonna have a bath. I can't have a bath of these because the, the, the if uh, honestly you see these get in a bath and they start bubbling with the yeah. Like uh, I say, just take the, the tablet. I think they're, I think I don't know what it is, but it's look at it. It's yeah. like a mess. It's like quite a mess down there. I can't. Oh, take, yeah. take the tablets. <sighs> take the tablets and yeah. come back. Come back. <sighs> Some, you know, in a week's yeah, time, well, let me know how it goes. Okay. Right? Right, so, so you know what it is. Let's imagine that that perfectly normal scenario has happened. <laughs> what, what, what is your point? Right, it'll come back the week after. Yeah. The problems downstairs will be sorted. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's 76. He's gonna have something else wrong with him. I do another check on you. And even though you, you, you sack a sort of... They're not, it's not, they're not quite right, to be honest. No, but they better. Yeah, well, it, it swings and roundabouts yeah, because... Yeah, well, that's, that's the, life, the, that's the, life, the, 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 the penis is, is, is much more functional. The, the testicles are, are really, they've lost all their skin. It's just, it's just like a bag of spaghetti just hanging on the chair. Mm. And the arse, the, the arse is the itchiest arse I've ever had. I've had to, at some points, I, I've got blood under my fingernails. It's crazy. Sorry, it's not completely cured. And this is why no one wants to be a doctor anymore. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ricky Gervais. The English biologist Thomas Huxley once wrote, To a person uninstructed in natural history, his country or seaside stroll is a walk through a gallery filled with wonderful works of art, nine-tenths of which have their faces turned to the wall. Teach him something of natural history, and you place in his hands a catalogue of those which are worth turning around. To some, the wonders and intricacies of the natural world are a miracle, living proof of the existence of God. To others, the natural world is a wondrous illustration of Darwinian evolution. To discuss the complexities of plant and animal life, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, graduate of the University of Warwick and award-winning writer. Thank you so much for having me. And Carl Pilkington, a man with no qualifications, very little education, but who is now known the world over as a man with a head like a fucking orange. All right. Natural history obviously takes in everything to do with animals, plants, bacteria, which are in neither group. Um, I should start by just saying, Carl, that the natural world is so diverse that we don't even know how many species there are. Conservatively, there's two million species of animals. I mean, without even taking in plant life, there are at least two million species of animal. With plants and animals, there could be up to ten million species. Um, there are 37,000 different species of spider alone. What do you think of that? Uh, it's a lot. It is, isn't, isn't it? A lot. 
But if, if, if there's loads of stuff out there that we don't know about, and we don't know what it's doing, is it that important? Is it worth finding them now? Well, yeah. Why? Well, it may give us the key to unlock other mysteries. A spider won't. Well, it might do. A spider won't be unlocking well, any that, mysteries. Well, that's, that's totally- Plants are different. I, th I reckon no, there's a no, natural cure for everything no, out cause there. No, because there's loads- there's loads of animals that have toxins that, uh, are used in medicine. Yeah, I know that we use dangerous spiders to get rid of headaches or whatever, or they do in the tribes, right? Yeah, do you well, want to just expand on that point? Um, it's just that uh, that's what they do in tribes. Who's they've got they? all natural, all these tribes, they've got, they've got all natural remedies. They, you know, they go, what, what's up with you? You got a sore ankle, chew on this twig. And it works. I've seen it. They've, they've sent women out there and like, they couldn't believe the stuff they can do with twigs and trees and hedgehogs and stuff. Mm. Not, it wasn't say, an in-depth analysis, was no. it? What I'm saying- Women, they just sent oh. some women out there. No, yeah. they, 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 <laughs> apparently. Yeah. yeah. I mm. reckon the, the stuff that's got venom in it, that's useful. Mm. We probably know about all them. Because well, it's, it doesn't make any sense, we right, probably know that, about all of them. What, what I mean is the police know about the gangsters, but right. they go, right, we're aware of them, right. let them get on with it. We'll keep our eye on them. And it's the same in the jungle. The spiders, the deadly ones you're aware of, the ones that are just pottering about, you go, don't even worry about them, don't even give them a name. They're not doing anything. <laughs> but what if there's another poisonous spider they haven't identified yet, that lurking in the undergrowth? I'd be very surprised. So but you'd be very surprised? I'd be surprised if there was something- It sounds like laziness on your part. But they're no, discovering new not. species all the time. We know about all the dangerous stuff now, cause we have to, we live no, in a world don't. now. We do, we know about a lot of the dangerous stuff. Whenever they find something new now, it's like a well, new look, butterfly or- Well no, well no, look at AIDS. What? When I was a kid, I'd, no one had ever heard of AIDS. Yeah, but that's not a natural thing, is it? That's not like a spider or- What do you mean it's like not a natural neighbor. thing? It's not, a, it's not a natural thing, it's not something that's- AIDS hasn't been like living under the soil for millions of years going, I'll wait till the 1980s and I'll come out and kill a load of people. No, but it is a natural thing. It's a new thing. thing. Yeah, it's new. It, yeah, but loads of animals are new, aren't they? Not in- not, I mean, it, uh, uh, evolutionary terms, there's new animals I'm in sure, evolution. I'm sure there's new stuff deep down that's just like, almost like bacteria, sat under the soil, it'll never come to the top. Right? It's like having- having an old woman who's a neighbour. She never goes out, she doesn't bother you. Let her be. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but what if that old neighbour could unlock the secrets to- I don't think she can. Just even to us understanding the- the complexities of the universe, of because, the way things have developed and grown. Because we know about it. Well, why would we know about it? Because I never understand why is it you want to stop researching and studying now? Why is it that you're happy to to just draw a line under everything else? What if people had said this back in the 19th century? We've done this. We've done this. I think someone in the 1900s we uh, said everything that's going to be invented has been invented, and and then look what happened in that century. Yeah, and I've said to you, look at the stuff that is being invented now. The frisbee and stuff like that. It's all, it's, <laughs> it's, all, not... it's all stuff that, right. that you kind of go, it's all right, it's a good idea, but it, we don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but the frisbee wasn't being worked on by the top brains of our generation. That was some novelty toy that some manufacturer made. Yeah, but it's like, look at the fuss we made over that fella who came up with a Dyson vac. Everyone was like, he's up there with Einstein. Well, he's not. Uh, it's a good vac. It cleans up floors well and everything. Who said he's up there with well, Einstein? His one PR of, people In did. one of those programmes where they did, like, great inventions of our time, it was easy early on, you go, Einstein, you know, Newton did this, Archimedes, Dyson. <laughs> and that's- and they, they started to run out, because it is harder <laughs> to come up with something new now. Because everything that's needed- remember, the things we've invented are things that we sort of go, we could do with that. Inventors don't sit there going, what can I make? Oh, I need a toaster. They've sat there, they've burnt the toast under the grill and they've gone, I need some sort of device here. Well, that somebody, I can put yeah, bread yeah, in. yeah, yeah. And what can it do? Oh, Necessity like that, is the mother of invention. Yeah. However, there are uh, uh, people who sit around going, where, where's a, you know, a loophole in the market? Where's a little, where's well, a niche? Well, here's something. About right. a year ago, I came up with a see through toaster so that you can see how much the toast is cooked. Right. I found it about two months after that. Someone had done it. Right. So I've just been beaten to the post. Yeah, but all you're really doing, Carl, is That's modifying that. an existing invention. What, 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 what other examples are being pipped at the post, are well, there? Uh, uh, it's got to be one that hasn't been done. Or it's not your theory. But, but also what? something that unlocks a mystery. Or helps the world. What's causing problems in the world at the moment that needs sorting? Well, cures for things. Uh, Faster transport, uh, to, to, anything to do with security, anything to do with well-being. I know? mean, 
obviously environmental concerns are a big issue. People trying to design automobiles that Fuel. can run on different yeah. alternative fuels. I met a bloke on a conference once who sent a drawing to Blue Peter. It was their design a car of the future, and he sent them a drawing that was a car, and the only innovation was that you can have a shit while driving. <laughs> And then it, he put, he put, shit goes down pipe, which becomes fuel. They must have looked at that and gone, what a mania. I think that's a brilliant, I mean, I've driven a long way. I drove to Cornwall recently and I would have loved But I think he did it when he was about nine. Seat. And he must have thought, oh, I'm being driven to school. Oh, I need the toilet. Wouldn't it be good but if why hasn't, why hasn't that been done? What? Well, like Steve says, I've been in the same situation when you're driving and you go, oh, where's the service station? You see a sign saying 36 miles. So what would you say? So you suggest pull your trousers down and shit down in the seat that's a toilet? Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you've got your nan in your back. She's got one as well. So you are going to Cornwall all shitting. <laughs> <laughs> well, not all the time, but it's, it's, it's more useful to me than a lighter. So also, what, at Where'd what you point wash do you hands? Wa wa wash your hands or yeah. wipe your arse? At what point does that occur? Well, oh, that's the end of the journey. <laughs> oh, God! So, you get in, you have a shit at Deptford, and you wipe your arse at uh, Paul Perrow. Yeah, but like I've said to you, this isn't like just people going, oh, I think I'll have one. Do you need one? Not really, but it's something to do, isn't it? I'm sick of playing I Spy, I'm having a shit. You have it when you really need one. When you have to pull off a motorway, it's a lot of messing about. There's probably going to be a queue at the toilet. No more queues at toilets. Ten minutes, Rick, that takes, doesn't it? Ten no, minutes yeah. to Ten pull minutes. off, have a quick shit. Driving along. Just, it's just going on. It's just going on. Don't even know about it. Radio's on. Everyone's happy. Doesn't matter. I don't know, I mean, we all do it as well, that's the thing. Anything else you'd, uh, come up with? I mean, so far you've come up with nothing. That was a, a, a nine-year-old boy's idea. <laughs> I mean, the Breville maker wasn't needed. <laughs> That's true. That's What's the mean? Breville maker? Like it toasted was... sandwiches. <laughs> but there's so many things, chocolate fountains, anything like that. I just go, what are these? Who's invented these? Who's okayed this idea? And yet I can't have a shit on the motorway. <laughs> You are so ungrateful. It's not that, uh, it's just that, you know, when- it's good when you're a kid, isn't it? When you- Christmas is all about, like, your presents. What did you want when you were a kid? What's your best present you ever had? Um, there's a few things, I mean, one that- one that I always remember one Christmas, right? Uh, it was the year when computers first came out. Right. right? And there was one called the Sinclair Spectrum that I wanted, right? What- what year are we talking, 84? Must be oh. 80, 83, 84, right, yeah. Right, yeah. And, uh, anyway, I, th I think my mum and dad's got me one. It's, you know, it's under the tree in a big box, I'm thinking, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. About the size of a computer, brilliant. Anyway, Christmas Day comes, uh, you know, I couldn't sleep and all that, excited like you are as a kid. Yeah. Get up, open it, it's not the one I wanted. Right? Really? It's not the Spectrum, it was a ZX81. Okay. Right? So I thought, well, I've, I best not show that I'm disappointed in that, you know, even, even as a kid you have sort of, you know, that thing of You saying, lost that, now you say, oh, it's not what I wanted, Suzanne, but go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, but, but, you know, so, uh, so I sort of, you know, pretended I liked it and that, I thought, oh, just play some games on it, I'll just get on with it, right? <laughs> anyway, I try <laughs> and load sure. up. Even yeah. as a kid, he had the way of the world. world. I know. His parents have saved up for it. He's, look at his frown lines. Look, he's frowned since he was about four. Yeah. Look yeah. at those lines. Right. So, yeah, but this is why. You'll understand in a minute when I tell you the end of this story. Go on. So, I load up a computer game, which t used to take about ten minutes. Right? Was it on cassette? On cassette. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cassette. it sounds like a fax machine, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, right. Anyway, it wouldn't load. I was thinking, what's up with this? Is it broke? Right. And I kept trying it, and my dad sort of- he, he, my mum used to get up early to open the presents with me. My dad got up at about midday, he couldn't be bothered. Right? <laughs> Anyway, he comes this down, I'm so still- This is so telling, this is I know, the picture uh, he paints is I so know, heartbreaking. Like Alan Bennett or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dickens. Yeah, right? or some uh, of those kind of sixties back, like Kathy Come Home, sort of, <laughs> yeah, you know, really in sync dramas. So, so anyway, so I'm there, right, get frown growing and that. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to read this book, thinking, why isn't it working? So my dad has a look, <clears> and he goes, oh, you're missing a bit. I said, what? He goes, you need a ram pack, right? right? Which is a bit that you put in the back of it, that gives it extra memory. Yeah. So I'm like, what do you, you need? You need one of them. <laughs> I'm like, what, what do you mean? It's, it's Christmas Day, right? And and we're talking about the days when, like, Tandy wasn't open. Sure. It wasn't open for days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like now, by lunchtime Christmas Day, everything's open again. <laughs> yeah, right? sure, yeah. Then you had to wait about two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Everyone like, had a big holiday and everything. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, God. Oh, oh. I actually started to be sick, like, with frustration. <laughs> oh, no! I, what? 
Well, how old were you? How old were you? Do you know what? I, how old were you? Well, like I say, I, I don't know, it must have been about eight or something. Oh. But that thing of like, what, what, it's Christmas Day and I can't play with it and I had to wait for like two weeks or what have you, sat over the kitchen sink sort of going, <laughs> <laughs> stress, stressing out. <laughs> Hated it, it was a rubbish Christmas. <laughs> oh, wow. I love the idea of you going, <laughs> it's stress, isn't it? What did your dad say? He just sort of said, look, calm down, we'll get you on when the shop's open and It's like, yeah, but it's two weeks, isn't it? <laughs> I have never heard anyone being sick for stress. <laughs> oh, poor little kid, just so stressed. Carl was too shy to obviously ever do this for real, but um, we thought that end, end the, uh, the run of this with uh, things that Carl hates. Yeah, we, we, we know the thing he likes. We know that. So, uh, Carl, okay. we should just point out that we've uh, been inspired by the TV show Room One Hundred One. We didn't come up with this ourselves. Yeah, we did. <laughs> this is Room One Hundred Two. <laughs> yeah, we'll be Paul Merton. And you'd be Carl Pilkington. Right. right. You could try to banish to room 101 all those things that you dislike, never, they're never to be seen again. Will you please welcome Carl Pilkington? Right. Who? Well, maybe. <laughs> 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 all right. Carl, so what's your first, what does this represent? And imagine me putting some on a, right. on the table next year. Go on. Right. Well, first of all, right, it's dead hard to come up with like five things that drive you up the wall. Okay. Right. It's not easy because there's so many things. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, picking five, it's like someone saying, pick your five favourite records or five favourite films. Yeah. Sure. It's hard, so... You know in Desert Island Discs where they, you, you always get the complete works of Shakespeare in the Bible? Yeah. I think you should include Ricky Gervais. I think you should always be there, already <laughs> in Room 101. They don't have to nominate you. <laughs> you, al you always go in. <laughs> 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 go on then, go on then. Uh, <laughs> so, so don't bother putting him in. Don't bother putting Ricky in, Carl. He's already yeah, there. Yeah, I'm already there, waiting. Yeah. Go on then. Right. Yeah. First of all, right, I thought, I thought of like, uh, things that we've done in the past. Sure. And like, quotes and that, that you yeah. were talking about. Yeah. That, that, that quote that people say that, uh, you know, money doesn't make you happy. Yeah. Right, we're just, we're just rattling through some here. Yeah. That, that annoys me. What? Money well, the quote, doesn't money doesn't make you happy? Yeah, cos it does, it clearly does. <laughs> <laughs> right. Without it, life's pretty dull, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Right? So, okay. So that's like a little short, short thing, and and <laughs> you know, then then that sort of makes you think about people with money. There was yeah. a program on in the week. I don't know if you saw it, Steve. The the one uh, posh loading. That was brilliant, wasn't it? That was a great show. So annoying. Oh yeah. There was a girl on there, right? Who's from a from a rich family and that, and uh, you know, it's not her fault. She's from a rich family. No. It's like how posh people annoy people. That doesn't annoy me, because the way I sound is because of where I'm brought up and that. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you if you sound posh, you sound posh. It's, yeah. You know, it doesn't change you as a person or whatever. Yeah, yeah. it's quite But true. this girl, right, um, did you see it, Steve? I did. You didn't see it, I did you, Ricky, right? This girl goes shopping, she buys like four t-shirts and a crappy little handbag. Yeah. Spends about 1,300 quid, and she's just wasting it going, you know, the woman's saying, uh, Oh, you love these, you know, they're really in fashion, so oh, whatever, I'll probably only wear them once anyway. And it's just, that sort of thing annoys me. Yeah. You know, people with money, y you know, who have grafted for it, are good, but like, um, you know, people who, who just get money given to them from the rich parents trying to make the world. There was another point, right, where she's in a shoe shop, right, and, um, she, she's like, got these big boots and stuff, <laughs> uh, but part of the problem is, right, She's quite odd looking in that, right? <laughs> but she's got a lot of money, so she makes herself look half decent. Yeah. <laughs> Problem is, she's got fat ankles. She's got what? Fat ankles. Right. And they drive her up the wall because no matter, I mean, it's one of them things, isn't it? It's almost like God has gone, yeah, you can have all the toffees and stuff you want, you can have like your nice t shirts, but at the end of the day, love, you're stuck with these ankles. And you can see. <laughs> I've got to say, yeah. right, you can have all the toffees you want, yeah, and you have nice handbags and that, but you're stuck with these ankles, oh God! And, and I really wanted to get a job in that shoe shop where she was going in, blowing her dad's money, and she was calling up her dad saying, oh, daddy, is it all right if I, you know, I'm just out shopping, I, I've just bought some shoes that, that have cost like a grand, mm. and I really wanted a, a job in that shoe shop. Just so I could sit there, and when she comes in, you go, oh, hello, love, whatever her name is, lovely to see you here again, got some lovely new shoes in. God, look at these nice new boots, everyone's wearing them, Victoria Beckham, and you know, all the girls are wearing them, yeah, I try them on. Oh, you can't, because your ankles are so fat, you can't get into these. <laughs> Never mind, here's some boots. <laughs> she really annoyed me, and I'm not a nasty person, You're but not. She, she brought it out of me. Oh, oh, I'm worried though, this idea of you getting a job in a shoe shop, I'm not sure you're qualified. Well, <laughs> I 
yeah, like all the, the, that's way round it. That yeah. some people go, oh, I'd like her to lose all her money or something. He'd like to actually bother yeah. go through getting the job in the shop. Yeah, and then just wait in there. You'd be too busy mucking around outside like, on some kind of trolley stuck in a little lake. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> not... <laughs> But interestingly in that show, I was watching that show, and at one point, um, you mentioned that her fat heels, or her fat ankles, yeah. um, her, her, she said, I'd like to do, I'd like to have various changes to my body, I have plastic surgery, I'd like to do this to my face, and da 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 And, uh, her mum's there, and her mum's going, no, don't be so, that's how, no, you're my daughter, you're beautiful, da 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 No, you shouldn't, I'm not gonna let you have those, da da She went, I'd love to have an operation on my fat ankles. Her mum went, yeah, I do agree with that. <laughs> 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 oh, how bad can fat ankles be? I know. What were these ankles like? Well, tell us, Rick, like... you must know. No, <laughs> no they, do you know what I mean, though? like, if you said to a little kid, to a four-year-old kid, draw a person, that's, they'd draw her legs. Do you know where there's no sort of thin bit, and then it comes out a bit for your knees? Oh, yeah, and they're just ankles. It was just like two logs. People going to say, I like your new flares. What do you mean flares? They're <laughs> leggings. <laughs> Cheeky. Oh, oh. Awful, so, you know. It's okay, so you're putting in... F posh girls with fat ankles. Right, supposing y y your mind, right, was put, your mind was got put into any animal, right, and you've got to get from where you are now, right, to Glasgow, right, as an animal, right, but the authorities will be looking out for it. <laughs> okay. And it's shooting you, right? And, uh, w w you went through loads, didn't you? I was thinking about it for, for it must have took me about an hour. So your yeah. mind, sorry, your mind has been put into an animal. Animal, yeah. So it's you and in you, this animal thinking right, yeah. you've got to get to somewhere. But, but, but the maybe, maybe know you're in the animal. Yeah, maybe your body is in Glasgow or something, and you've got to get this animal to get to you so it can transfer its mind back into your body. But yeah. the but, government knows that I'm. Oh, <laughs> we've all had that conversation. <laughs> So the government, the government's going, Carl can't have yeah, his own brain back. I only have it with Carl, don't yeah, I? These conversations yeah. go on, yeah. So yeah, so you're, you're on the way. So think about it, you, you think about it just for a second, so, let's recap. <laughs> your, your body's in Scotland. Right. He's the only one that takes my question seriously. Your, your brain is in London. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And there's like loads of security and stuff looking out in the sky for animals or looking on, on the field, seeing what's trying, looking a bit suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Trying, trying to get to your body. And they're shooting the brain, And they're shooting everything and killing all the animals. What thing would you pick to get your brain to Scotland that wouldn't get caught? And I reckon I, I I've got the answer. A wasp? No, because think about it, a lot of people get irritated. If it sort of wanted to get a lift <laughs> in a car okay. going down the motorway, if someone's driving it's a wasp yeah. in the car, it's a yeah. nightmare. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. <laughs> cause a right accident. Yeah. So think of something that people wouldn't, you know. And the clock's ticking as well. You're, you're taking this really, very seriously, yeah. aren't you, Carl? You've only got a couple you have of thought, You've given this a lot of thought, haven't you? You have. Yeah. Um, so, uh, something with speed. Yeah, it's something got that a... can travel quite speedily. Well, well that's. Yeah. Well, and something that's also inconspicuous. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that the sort of thing you're, you're oh, yeah. that's what you're going yeah. to say? Yeah, yeah. Um, and is it a, is it a creature that's, uh, that's native to this country? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is. I've got no idea, Carl, what are you think? Tell him. A flea. A flea? Think Tell him why. It. Think about it. Um, right, this flea, it's got my brain. Mm. <laughs> it's dead small, the flea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks right. for clearing that up. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it, so it goes, right, I've got to get to Scotland. So it jumps on someone who's going to Euston Station. Right. They, they don't know it's there. No. The government can't see it. Mm. <laughs> God, I can't see it. Steve! <laughs> think of that statement! <laughs> think of you who just tuned in! Yeah. Now, uh, People get on the train, go to Glasgow or Edinburgh, wherever in Scotland mm. it is. It jumps off, it goes right, uh, jumps on someone else who's going the way it needs to go. Gets there, still no one's seen it. Jumps on me, I get my brain back. Yeah. The government are like, Phew. But, and you feel confident that your brain would fit in that of a fleas? Well, you said there was no problem with the size of it. You said you could... That certainly wouldn't be. So... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, I, I pretty much genius. you could download everything you know into a flea. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's genius. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, What would you thinking. rather have, right? Um, roller skate feet, and there's little wheels, right? Uh, chopstick hands. Yeah? Mm. Instead of hands. Chopstick instead of hands. Wheels instead of feet. Yeah. Right? Or acne? Uh, How big are the wheels? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were talking earlier about things that have happened when we were away. Um, quite a lot. Quite a lot, but there's one thing I heard. It might be a rumour. I hope it's a rumour. I kept it from you, Steve, because I, I didn't- I want you to sort of have spirits out because we've been at it in the office and we've got to be- Okay, um, okay, I'm just gonna say it. Um, I think Shed's having a split out. Sorry, I didn't... Shed Seven have split up. Uh, 
<clears throat> I, sorry, I think I got something in my eye. <laughs> uh, it's just a bit dusty, you know, I think. So, okay, if it's true, it's true. If not, we got their, at least we got their music. Their music, <laughs> the music, the music lives on. So we're going to dedicate this show to Head 7 and all the bands they influence. influence. So we're just going to play. Just every, every, every artist that, that formed a band after they'd heard Shed 7. Just play them from now on and obviously the hits, all the hits, oh, the I, Shed 7 hits. When I saw this, I saw it on a website, it said about, is it true, Shed 7 was split up? And the next, you know, one of those dorky message boards, someone came out and said, you are joking. <laughs> 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 oh. oh dear, what else is that? I just away? pray that uh, uh, it's just a rumour. It is just a rumour, yeah. Then oh, get in touch. Just, just call in if it's true. Um, well, no, call in, call in yourself. It, on well, Shed, if Shed's listening, yeah. and he's, he's not busy, he's got Mondays off now. Yeah. Uh, call in and say, what, what was the split all about? I'm wondering if you're turning into my dad, because uh, he um, he bought my mum a bracelet. He won't mind me talking about this because he said you're probably talking about this on the radio, and you're right, Dad. I am talking about it. He bought my my mum a uh, little gold bracelet, lovely lovely gift. You know, it was a lovely thing, and I, she opened it. She loved it, and everyone thought, what a great gift, lovely gift. He wouldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> He wants something about the gift he bought. He kept on grabbing my mum's arm and showing it to people. Look at that. Look at the gleam on that. <laughs> the gleam! See, see, look at the shine on that. Look at the gleam there. <laughs> look at the that. Gleam. And he, do you know what he said? He went, he said the great thing about that's pure gold. He went, it's an investment. <laughs> that's, that's an investment there. It's gold, oh, you know, it's always worth oh, something gold. I love that when people give you a gift and it goes, an investment. But, I love it. But what, not only does it take away any of the romanticism of it, but it was the way he constantly was talking about how great a gift it was I'll that tell he what, I haven't, I haven't heard the word gleam for it's 30 funny. years. Look at the gleam on that. The gleam. Look at that, look at the sparkle on that. And look at that, and it looks like rope. That's what he gets, and it looks like rope. <laughs> it looks like gold rope. <laughs> And, uh, he just can't, I don't know, I, I heard it, he disappeared, we, we were opening gifts, he went disappeared, I could hear him in the kitchen going, think about that's, that's pure gold, that, Elaine, that's pure gold. <laughs> might melt, I might melt that down. Yeah. John, next door, <laughs> next door neighbour, John, look at that, look at the shine on that. That's great, that's brilliant though. But it's just, it doesn't, it sort of undermine the gift a bit, if you keep on droning well, no, on about it. People, people, if people enjoy giving, that's nice, isn't it, and you got to, you know, what did your mum say? She well, loved she it. can get a word in each week. <laughs> <laughs> That's a step up from a jar of coffee, though, isn't it? It is a step up, yeah. That's good. XFM. Let's do a couple of openings. Let's do a couple of openings. <clears throat> you do it. Well, you better say something. Mm. Well, I think you should say, hello, welcome to Ricky Gervais, uh, Ricky Gervais show on the, or whatever, podcast. I'm not on this, am I? Yeah. What am I doing here? Well, just saying hello. Hello? No, let me, let us do the introductions. We're doing two introductions <laughs> in <laughs> the two shows. That's the idea. Fuck me. <laughs> I just think, you know, we want to lift off the show straight away yeah. into the uh, stratosphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah. the best way to do that, it seemed to me, was to resurrect a game we used to play when we first began the show in old XFM days. Do you oh, remember the yeah. game, do you remember the game Make rub, Ricky rub, Gervais Rub me hard. Rub you hard? No, no. No, so no what, what that was only in the pilot. We never <laughs> actually did that on live radio. <laughs> okay, right. Um, no, it was the game Make Ricky Gervais Laugh. Oh, I remember, and we yeah. we used to get people, uh, Carl, you probably didn't hear it, we used to get people to sort of send in pictures and uh, jokes and stuff. And if I could make Ricky laugh, on air with those. He won a toffee. Things, then they won a gift of some kind. Yeah. Anyway, um, a lot of, a lot of emails actually saying people love your laugh, Rick. So I was, in a sense, we're giving they, the public what they want. They must be taking the mickey. But this is a picture I found in today's copy of the Sun. So if if uh, you're listening at home and you want to know what the picture looks like, rush out and buy a copy. Only forty p. Yeah. And uh, it's it sponsored by the Sun. <laughs> we do white van, man. Exactly. It amused, <laughs> it amused me straight away this because bear in mind, right, it is one of the world's biggest rock stars. Okay. Just check out the face. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic! Look at that. Oh, that is Michael Stipe. Oh dear, we're sort of like they're looking like I don't know some sort of Nazi officer. That's not libelous. <laughs> that's not libelous. Mike, you, in your opinion, Michael Stipe. Yeah. He's outside there during the press conference yeah. for Peter Buck's. Equipment. It's not a good picture. I love. I think I love REM and I love Michael Stipe. I think he's a lovely man, but that's a bad picture, isn't it? He's got <laughs> big glasses on and yeah. stubble. Obviously, he's got bald head. He doesn't appear to be looking at anything. He's <laughs> looking right beyond like... everyone else. Can you yeah. see that, Carl? I'll tell you what he looks like. He looks like Zig, I think, from Zig and Zag. 
It looks like well, he is a muppet go. made of foam. Oh, love it. Nice the, to see that game the, come back. Yeah, the, the medium success. of radio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a good picture that is. I hope you enjoyed it. Coming up soon, we've got Sir David of Bowie, <laughs> Nicholas Cave, uh, <laughs> and Travis Flowers in the Window again. <laughs> you know, we get emails all the time. They're coming through all the way through the show. And I, I open know. them, and a lot of them, because you know, everyone's contributing, it's brilliant, but we can't really absorb everything. There's too much coming yeah. through. So I tend to open them quickly. I have a look, see if there's anything we can sort of make sense of and close them again. Sometimes Carl looks at the emails as I'm opening them. One opened just a minute ago. Did you saw his face? I suppose, yeah, what was it? His face was just stunned. He was it's just absolutely dumbfounded. It was yeah, like he'd what just is seen it? something extraordinary, right? And you closed it quickly. I, I did close it quickly. I'll tell you why, what? right? Always got to bear in mind how Carl's mind works. Uh, all he saw was the name of the band that this email was uh, promoting. So mm. all he saw, all Carl saw, and you can imagine how excited he was, was all he saw was half man, half biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all he saw. <laughs> I've never seen anyone so excited. Oh, God. It's, oh. It was actually just plugging the popular joke novelty band, half oh, man, half biscuit. Then, then. Yeah. Uh, uh, imagine how excited he was. That is fantastic. <laughs> man, half biscuit. Brilliant, Mr. Garibaldi. <laughs> oh, half man, half biscuit. That is genius. <laughs> oh, uh, amazing. I just saw it, and when you closed it again. Yeah, but the thing is, if if he hadn't have told you that, and he'd have it, uh, erased it, next week you'd be saying yeah, about the, what they've done in scientists. They've cloned a man with a biscuit. <laughs> He's got currents for eyes. Go Can I just say something now before we do Rockbusters? A lot of people sort of they come up to me, they say, Steve, we like the show. When are you going to get rid of Rockbusters? It's, it brings it down. I, I'm, not I'm not joking. I'm not joking. There is lots of people. Come, on, let, let come, off, it. come off it. What? Come off it. What? I know people who say, you're never going to stop that, are you? So <laughs> one of us is lying again. <laughs> Well, not really. We, you know, I, I, I'm, oh, talking about, I'm talking about people who've listened to the show. You're talking about Suzanne, <laughs> your uh, girlfriend. Oh, uh, Martin. He, he'll be at home now with a pad. Getting ready to play. <laughs> but I should just... Max Freeman did, did say, did encourage Carl on a couple of occasions. He even tried to get him through with the answer, egg, when we were doing that name in animal round. Yes. So... But I should just say that people, they, people think that somehow Ricky and I are endorsing Rockbusters, that somehow by allowing it on the show, somehow we think it's good or we appreciate it. And I need to point out that it's more like when a child comes back from school and they've done a painting. Yeah. It's crap. Yeah. But of course the you've got to stick it on the fridge. bigger than the house. <laughs> you've got to stick it yeah. on the fridge because otherwise yeah. the kid's going to exactly. get upset. In this next episode, you've got to remember the cat is bigger than the house. <laughs> exactly. It okay. doesn't look like anything. The humans don't have bodies, their legs come straight from their head. Yeah. Mummy and daddy. Please Please welcome to the stage, Carl Pilkington's Rockbusters. Right. <laughs> right, so, uh, cryptic clues, no, and initials, cryptic. and you work it out, clue. you email in and that. Yeah. First one. Yeah. Uh, don't be stealing my tools. Take your sisters. <laughs> All right, and the initials N-K. Don't be so, stealing my tools. Take my sisters. Yeah, so that's like the cryptic clue, and the initials of the artist or band is N-K. Mm. All right. Second one. Buy it if you want, not bothered. Think about it. Come back. <laughs> right, come back if you want. <laughs> start again, Carl! I did last half way through! Right, start that second one again! Right, well, you can back. <laughs> it's different, it's different! Well, the first one was, uh, buy it if you want. Now, now this one was, uh, yeah, well, write it down, buy it. Right, right, do it. Do it. If it's a cryptic clue, all the letters count. Do it. Buy it if you want, I'm not that bothered. You know, think about it, come back, check some other places out first before you, you know. <laughs> So we've got no we've got no time for other clues. Right, right. so that's S C. Right, that, do that clue again. Buy it if you want. I'm not I'm not, I'm not fussed. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Think about fast. it. Fast, fast is making the appearance. Fast wasn't there before. Do the clue again. Do the clue again. <laughs> Initials SC for that one. Do the clue again. I don't want to do it again. Do you haven't finished it yet? I have. That's it. No, do the clue again. <laughs> Can I do, it again? do the clue again. Well, I'll buy it if you want. I'm not fussed, right? Chop around, <laughs> come back. It's up to you. I'm not. I'm not pushing you into anything. It's right? up to you. Wasn't there? S S C S C oh, for that one, dear. right? And the final one. Uh, that's good. I can play ten pin bowling again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what's oh, the clue? Christ. Well, that's, that's O. For oh. That one. O. O. 
All right, so... Uh, uh, okay, now I assume... I'm not going to bother to look, but I assume there's a, there's a <laughs> jiffy bag of tax yep. which people can win. <laughs> All right, well, great, good luck. Uh, um, Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk is the email address. Play record. Thorns? Oh, no, no, bye. If you want an old fussy and come back, have a look around. I'm, not, I'm, I'm open Wednesdays, by the way. Shit, I'll see you later. Um, should we have the Rockbusters answers? Yeah, You've got go to get that attacked out of the way. I'd love to. Uh, number one was, don't be stealing my tools. Take your sisters. The initials were NK. That was Nick Ursel, right? Nick Ursel? Nick Ursel. 80s. I don't know. I've never heard of that band. Nick Kershaw. Nick Kershaw. Oh, no, okay, Nick Kershaw, Kershaw yeah. Nick... Oh, sorry, what... what? Nick I don't Kershaw, understand right? it. Nick... How does Nick Kershaw... Second one. No, no, no! Don't move on! Nick Kershaw! What's Nick Kershaw? <laughs> Jesus. All right. It doesn't the count. It's not on, a clue. But let's just leave it behind us, all right? Second one was, uh, buy it if you want. You know, I'm not bothered. You can think about it. Come back, have a, have a look around, think it over. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not fussed. The initials were SC. That was soft cell. Right? That works. Yeah. Well done. That works. Right. And that's good. I can, uh, I can play something bowling again. That's O. That's outcast. Right? What does that mean? Outcast? You're out, you, you, you broke your arm. Right? Uh, got the oh, cast that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's ludicrous. I mean, that's ridiculous. You broke your arm, you were in a cast, you got rid of the cast, you're out cast. Did yes, anyone yes. get that? Yeah. I, I mean, I am stunned. I think, to be fair, that was because how many bands begin with O? Yeah. I think that's why people got it. Exactly. But they were guesses, yeah. I could probably make Oasis work if I tried hard enough. We've done that. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, uh, uh. So, uh, outcast. That's ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? But it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Worse than that. Worse than that. The leap to We're bowling. Like worse than that. <laughs> no, Imagine I, I, that. I remember when I did my wrist in, then it fixed, and I went temping bowling. Why did you do your wrist in? So, you so it's what you did. Brilliant. So, next week's quiz is what am I thinking? You're an idiot, Carl. Play was, a record. So when I Why did you do your wrist in? <laughs> crash. A, a, a what? Crash. A, a crash. crash. You had a crash? Yeah. That sounds like a story we've not explored. Not much to it. I just went on a free, uh, sort of rally day. <laughs> uh, got in this car. I'd been working all night, right, so I wasn't the best condition to be whizzing around the track <laughs> in a car. Sure. Uh, like a Formula One type car. Yeah. Uh, spun out of control, hit some mud, smashed it all in, uh, wrote it off, and I didn't realise I'd done a load of damage until... Well, you landed on your head, but you were fine. <laughs> yeah. Who's the winner? Mike Godley. <laughs> <laughs> We were talking about, uh, <laughs> schools, <laughs> swearing, kids at school. Mm. I- I just remember at school- I uh, loads of my friends now are becoming teachers. Yeah. And I just- I can't imagine what it must be like in an environment with kids. Cos when we were at school, I mean, not particularly me, but lots of people in the- in the class, and you'd all end up doing it, would just treat teachers like they were- they weren't humans, like they yeah. were just creatures from another well, planet, that were there to be tormented. Because, yeah, it's, it's- it's a game, isn't it, to see if I can wind someone up to distraction. But is it- And but most people grow out of that. But is it because- <laughs> not everyone. <laughs> But especially they've got a bit of cash in their pocket now, <laughs> and uh, a little bit of success. They tend to think that that gives them licence to treat people badly, it's terrible. But, okay. uh, but I remember there was a guy, this is such a terrible story, there was a, there was a teacher who came in and he was teaching us, and, and one kid, one of the hard nuts, he'd found out that this, this guy, he's, he lived on his own and he had a cat, and the cat got run over. Mm. And, and so he, we got in early, like everyone was in early and before the teacher came in, and this kid drew a picture of a cat being run over by a car, in chalk on the blackboard, a huge picture of it, and the teacher just came in, saw it, burst into tears and ran out. And the thing is, that was like the beginning of term, so he could never get us back after that. There was never going to be any respect for him. It was just- Because now, yeah. It's just like, it's, I just remember now, thinking about it, just thinking- I mean, at the time I remember thinking it was bad, but now it's just heartbreaking. It's devastating. I know. It's just if so- they just forget, they let their guard down a little yeah. bit. Did you ever do you the one where you just- just, mm, mm, just humming. Yeah. And, and, yeah. everyone, and you'd tell us to stop it and then everyone would just come We used to, there was one teacher, uh, me and my mate used to go up to him and, and just, when we saw the other one, just sort of sniff him slightly <laughs> and then sort of like, so he goes, what, I got nothing. And he just, he'd, just, he'd, he'd walk away sniffing his armpit. But those kind of mind games, it's like... I know. Incredible. Once, right, I was talking about this in the week actually, we had this, uh, um, uh, teacher and he must have been sort of like, sort of 60 then, right, and we're all about sort of like 12. We had to do French, you had to put your thing on the booth and it was a... Uh, I've, t I've told you somewhere, le chat est ce le... You know, all that, right, and rep that repete, mean? um, cats on the wall, right. right. Um, and, uh, it, he'd repeat it in French, and of course everyone was going, F, 
<laughs> see, to, yeah, uh, yeah, just yeah. like just for fun, and he heard this, and he listened back to all of them, and he realised it goes, and he went mental. He went, uh, uh, I don't believe this. Do you know how much these cost? He was going mad, and he was going red and bursting like Carl was earlier, and it was like, I just I can't stand this anymore. And he, he picked up an exercise book, he said, look at this exercise book, look. And, uh, um, I was like, his name, he went, so-and-so, look, oh, look, oh, look, he's put, and, uh, his, I'll change his name, um, Smithers, he went, oh, look, he's put Smithers in his shit. Oh, oh, he goes, oh, he's got clever on this side, he's put Smithers in a lump of shit, that's good. <laughs> Right? And oh. he went berserk, he went, he went, oh look, he's drawn a picture of a penis with wings, and he's written underneath, Dicky Bird. He went, is that clever? He went, do you want me to put a piece of paper up so you can come and write swear words and draw ladies' genitals all day? And I went, <laughs> <laughs> like that laugh, he went, I'm glad you think it's funny, Mr. Gervais! And he stormed out. Oh, God. Yeah. And, and did he ever come back? No, but we put the bit of paper up for him and said, <laughs> look, well, look what yeah. we've done you, sir. <laughs> That's a fanny. Yeah. There's some knobs. Yeah. Was it biology? Uh, no, it was French. Oh, French, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I just remember things like games like, um, there was some cupboards at the back of the, one of the, the I think the maths class, and one kid just got in the, in the cupboard before the teacher came, and then sat in there for like, you know, 45 minutes, and just towards the end of the, the thing just came out. Brilliant. Just came out and just went, oh, and sat down. And just, just things like that, which just kind of... It's not, I don't know what it is, or I don't know what, it's I just played a, a lack of respect. I played it? a trick like that once in my first year at college, this is pathetic, right, we're on a hall of residence, right, and there was this woman, um, sort of, sort of uh, middle-aged woman come around in a twin set, and I think she was from a bank, where she was doing students, can do a bank count, and, um, we knew she was coming up the corridor and she was not, right, and so my mate got in my wardrobe, in this little room, Right? Just sat there, she came in, I said, I said, have you been? I said, uh, yeah, I went, I said, okay, can I just do it? And there was a knock on the wardrobe, I went, I went, come in. <laughs> and he just came out, and I, I went, I went, all right, and he left, right? And she just looked at me, and I started laughing, I went, sorry, she went, you're not interested, I went, no. <laughs> but he just fell flat. It <laughs> fell flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Carl, a little bit happier now? Yeah. Mm. I'm happy. What, no, what have you done this week? Doesn't bother me that. Doesn't no, what have you done that. this week? Mm. Doesn't bother me that. Now, Carl, answer the question, you're the producer, what have you done this week? A few mm. things. Oh, it's funny, right, because when he's moaning about, uh, I was telling him about, I'd caught him out, it, he says he doesn't get a lunch break, he had over an hour, um, and, uh, and then he went, I think he went quite early that night to get a, a hob. I hadn't been delivered or something, so. And, uh, I said to, uh, was it James Hyman was in, wasn't he? Yeah, that's right. And I said, um, James, he's always complaining about working, does he work hard? And he went, well... He doesn't work as hard as he used to. Mm, Play a record, can't we? Interesting. Don't want to read really the mm. start button now, I might do it in a bit, a bit lazy. I'm not saying you're lazy. I'm saying that, you know, oh. maybe some people don't think you work as hard as you do. That's the, that's the way of the world. I'm not saying you don't work hard. Just reporting speech, really, on James Hyman. Calling him a liar? Play a record.